Hi everyone, Ron Spomer down in someone else's gun room <laughs> with a treat for you. Today I'm with my friend, good friend, George King, who's been a hand loader and a shooter for what, 50 years anyway, huh? Yeah, at least 50. Yeah, so we're a couple of old fuds, bear with us. But we've got something exciting for you. This is an unusual rifle George has, and we're going to cover it today, and it's probably chambered for a cartridge most of you have never heard of before. Uh, but there's a little bit of a twist to it, and that means some of you probably have heard of it before, just not with the same numbers in front of it. We are going to be talking about an old Remington product. <laughs> These boxes will show you how old we're talking. The rifle doesn't suggest it, but this is the 244 Remington. Stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, now George used to work for the Forest Service. We had a whole career there, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, 30 years. And that enabled him to hunt in a lot of places, Colorado, Alaska, he even went over to Germany for a while. He's been around the block. The man knows his guns, he knows how to hunt, and he hand loads. And that's what I think was kind of the inception of this rifle, is you wanted to create something special and different? Actually, I got into the, uh, the 244 slash six millimeter with a Ruger number one uh, as a graduation present to myself back in 1977. Oh, yeah. See, I told you you went way back. <laughs> but before you go on, you just guessed, spilled the beans on this one, six millimeter. That's what we're talking about. The 244 Remington became the six millimeter. And George, I think you decided to go back to the original just for the heck of it or what? Just because I'm a little bit different. Yeah, I like it. And that's something that hand loaders do. It's one of the things we enjoy about hand loading is we can create kind of what we want. Now, what was the initial difference between the 244 that then became a six millimeter? Why did they do that? As, as I recollect, the uh, when Remington introduced the 244, uh, for some unknown reason, he brought it out as, as a varmint type of a round. Mm -hmm. The twist that Remington put in the barrels was too slow to stabilize heavier bullets that people who wanted to have a, a dual purpose rifle, uh, deer, antelope, yep. and predators, varmints, yeah. uh, things like that. The heavier, longer bullets did not shoot in that 1 in 12 twist rifle. Yeah. And that's the story. That's, that's the way I remember it too. Now, folks, the competition in those days, exactly at the same time, of course, was Winchester, and they had the... 243 Winchester. Right. And the 243 Winchester came out with 100 grain bullets stabilized in a 1 in 10 twist. The 244 had 1 in 12 twist, and that's why it wouldn't stabilize. Now, it's just as George said, people thought, well, shoot, if I'm going to get one of these 24s, I might as well get one that'll shoot a bullet big enough to shoot a deer, successfully take a deer. Exactly. And they figured 100 grains, you know, that's kind of the benchmark. You don't want to go much below that. Then you're into the Varmin bullets, which, of course, is where Hermington was thinking with theirs. They were. They really shouldn't have been a problem, but it was a perception. And the 243, consequently, was off to the races, and the 244 lagged way behind. Yeah, it sure did. Obscurity. And then they came out with it as the 6 millimeter. And, and another, another thing that, that I've at least read about is that the uh, the original 1 and 12s were changed to a faster twist shortly thereafter, but it wasn't enough to... Yeah, it was hard to understand. Yeah, Most people exactly. by then thought, well, I heard the 244s won't stabilize them, and they didn't get the message that, no, no, we increased the twist rate. All of that twist rate stuff was a little bit mysterious back in our day, I say. Still is. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the problem. So the 243 Winchester became the standard in the 24 caliber, and the 244 slash 6 millimeter Remington lagged behind and suffered, and it never did really recover, even when they changed it to 6 millimeter. Now that's when I came into the picture with the 6 millimeter. That was my first fast, light deer varmint cartridge. And that was around 1970, oh, what would it have been, 71, 2? So, of course, these days, the 243 is, everybody chambers for it. Almost no one chambers for the 6mm anymore. I seriously doubt whether anybody is chambering for yeah. Maybe. And certainly maybe, not the 244. Maybe Cooper. Oh, Cooper, yeah. Maybe. 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 Yeah, it has some custom. Well, that's what yeah. you did here. This exactly. is a custom. 
He's a, now, this is a Remington Model 700. Remington 700. It's a uh, action. It's a long action 700 from back about 1966. The action belonged to. Uh, it was came from a rifle that my dad had. Oh, that he nice. bought back in the early 40s or mm-hmm. excuse me 60s, and uh, I didn't need a 30 out six, so I thought, well, uh, let's make a six mm out of it. Now we're dealing with a short action cartridge in a standard length action. Correct. That's another thing about the 6mm. Let's pull some out of here. The 6mm was based on the 757 Mauser cartridge. Winchester's 243 was the 308 Winchester cartridge. Mm-hmm. Another reason I think it became a little more successful because the 308 was really coming on strong. And it was a true short action. Remington built its short actions around that action length for the 308 length cartridges. The 6 millimeter 757 is a little bit longer than that. Just a smidgen, but enough to where you put it in a true short action and you've got to seat your bullets fairly deep. And as bullets became longer and more efficient, especially these days with high BC bullets, boy, it's 243 all the way. Now, they mostly have a 1 in 10 twist, I think, on 243s. Mm-hmm. That's the standard. Remington's 6mm does have 1 in 9, so it would stabilize the longer bullets a little better than the 243, but you're seeding them fairly deep into the case. Right. But the 243's case isn't as big either. It's not as long. You've got more case capacity in this one. So even if you do take up a little powder capacity with the longer bullet, I think you're still going to end up with more velocity. As far as, as, far as uh, being a hand loader... It's a little bit easier to work with because the 6mm 244 has a slightly longer neck, which is just one of the things that, that I like. Yeah, a lot of hand loaders like a longer neck. The claim is that it will keep your bullets more precisely aligned right. with the bore. You don't get any tilting of your bullet when you shoot, and then you've got more trimming of the neck over time. You can probably get a few more reloads out of one. I think that's kind of nitpicky. That's not necessarily a big deal. What is the velocity now you're getting? This this particular rifle and most of the uh, the hunting I've done with it, I use a 80 grain. 80 grain? 80 grain Barnes triple shot X bullet. Uh, about 3,400 feet per second chronographed. Mm-hmm. Do you have any trouble terminating deer with that? Uh, Not yet. (laughs) (laughs) And I can vouch for part of that not yet because (laughs) yesterday he took one and it was around a, what, 200-yard shot, somewhere in that range, uh, and just flattened that buck. Absolutely. A beautiful buck. buck. So if you are looking for an effective dual-purpose cartridge that you can use for coyote hunting, fox hunting, deer hunting, pronghorn hunting, I know guys will use them on elk. Montanans use 243s yeah. and 6 millimeters a lot. I don't necessarily recommend it, but once again, it's the bullet and where you put it more than the horsepower, the diameter, or the weight, or anything else. As long as that bullet reaches the vitals and discombobulates them, you're probably going to score. One thing that I've noticed about uh, the Barnes bullets, too, is that it's it's very, very common to get a complete pass-through uh, deer antelope. Yeah. And a lot of people will say, that's no good either, because you want your bullet to stay in there and dump all of its energy. It'll kill them better. I have not noticed that it makes any difference on killing them faster. Well, you know, if you've got an entry and an exit hole, you've got two places for the animal to bleed out. Yeah. And some other people have pointed out, especially on my YouTube videos, that when you have two holes, you've got this sucking chest wound thing. Mm -hmm. Two lungs are penetrated. The air is coming in. You no longer have that pressure that you need for the lungs to work properly. And you're done for, Mm -hmm. pretty much. And and I've seen that time and time again. Hey, how do you enjoy taking game with ammunition you make yourself? Is it a little extra special for you? You know, it it was 50 years ago, and now it's just a a natural thing for me to do. Yeah. Yeah. I, I still think about it now and then. You go through the process of loading it, and sure. it's a it's a labor of love. And it's in 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 my opinion, it's it's the only way to go. Yeah, you know yeah. exactly you know exactly what you got. Yeah, and you can seat it. Yeah. I would imagine with this one, you can seat your bullets out pretty far. Because seat of the that bullets long out action. pretty pretty long. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty much it. So if you're looking for something different. Come uh, steal George's rifle or build one of your own. (laughs)
<laughs> he probably prefer the latter. Hey, this is Ron Spomer with George King and his 244 new Remington rifle. <laughs> and we appreciate you watching. I invite you to subscribe to our channel. We sure appreciate that support. Check out our Patreon community on Patreon and <laughs> become a patron of Ron Spomer Outdoors. Helps us make these videos and keeps us flying. We really appreciate it. This is Ron Spomer signing off. Hunt honest and shoot straight. Mm -hmm.